Good afternoon. Pleasure to have you here in the first episode of this new podcast which we are launching called Tea Hub Brewery. Uh, this is something which we've been thinking about for a while. How can we create a show in Hyderabad for Hyderabadis, for Hyderabad entrepreneurs to showcase the best of entrepreneurship, uh, to have entrepreneurs like you come and talk about their successes, their challenges, their trials, their tribulations and so on and then essentially go out and inspire a lot of young people saying if someone with not necessarily a silver spoon right, starts off how you can build a truly scalable uh, global you know, world class business. So th thank you for joining us today and uh, look forward to the conversation over the next 40 minutes. Thank you and uh, it's a wonderful initiative MSR. Uh, I think I'm glad that T-Hub started this because a lot of stories <coughs> uh, relevant to Hyderabad would be you know needed for uh, Hyderabad uh, entrepreneurs. I think uh, this is a great initiative. Thank you. So Vijay, um, you know I remember when we've spoken in the past you told me about how you, you know went to did the typical you know young Indian route which is go to engineering college, uh, then go to the US and so on, right? So maybe if you can quickly for about a couple of minutes talk us through your early journey, right? Sure. Um, you know, what you did, you know, where you studied in JNTU, talk us through a little bit about that. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> I think uh, I did my BTEC in JNTU and uh, for someone who's come from a remote place, uh, coming to Hyderabad uh, and seeing such a big, uh, you know, city, right, I felt uh, so all four years went, you know, no blur. <laughs> enjoying that <laughs> time. So I have not been good at any of my academics. Uh, I, in fact, I think I graduated 59%. But I wanted to do something, uh, you know, always uh, remarkable. So that spirit had always been there and maybe that's, I developed something at my college level. And uh, yeah, so I did my master's uh, because uh, of the peer pressure. All my colleagues were uh, going to US. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I think uh, <clears throat> I've done my master's. I've uh, uh, worked uh, at Microsoft and I worked with a startup in US. Two years uh, working through the US, uh, you know, one, uh, so personally I had a breakup and I was in a deep pain. I felt like, uh, you know, what I <clears throat> really thought was my life I could not secure. So I thought, you know, maybe I can put this life to some purpose. And I thought uh, it's, right time for me to actually move back to India and I moved to India. When did you move back to India? So this was 2005 November. So how long were you in the US? I was in US for about uh, four and a half years. So 2001 to? Yeah, 2001 to, yeah, right. Uh, so I came back to India and then uh, I was working remotely uh, for part time with my US employer. And during that time, um, so I took inspiration from uh, one of my uh, classmates, Hari, uh, Harish. Uh, he wanted to serve the country. And, uh, you know, he tried uh, politics, uh, Lok Sattah. And then uh, he took to uh, Sanyasin. He became a, uh, now he's a Sanyasin at uh, Ramakrishna Mat. Uh, I couldn't choose that path. <laughs> For me, uh, I was uh, materialistic enough to not go there, but then, uh, still wanted to have a purpose, live and uh, let live, right? So that was the uh, uh, inspiration I was trying to draw. So I also dabbled a uh, few months with Lok Sata, did not, I, f I felt it was, I was too naive. But uh, as part of uh, working with them, I was uh, teaching some of the un unemployed uh, youth uh, tr uh, coding. And that's where uh, I came up with this idea that I should actually start an incubation center in uh, JNTU. So I built an incubation center in JNTU. It took me three months to convince them. They never heard the term. And so I was trying to convince them and explain them. I managed to get a lab, computer lab with 15 employees or 15 seats. And uh, so I then spoke to my US employer, the previous employer, and I told them I'll build your offshore division. No capital required. I'll uh, build a team. Uh, all you have to do is give me one project uh, to start with. So, so that's how my entrepreneurial uh, journey has actually begun. Okay. It was not. What, what was the name of the company? Uh, Ramp Technology Group. Okay. Uh, Ramp Group. Uh, so that company was acquired later, but but uh, you know it still operates. Sure. Okay. So 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 that's that was Ramp was essentially you were a professional working for a large U.S. company and came in and set it up, 
and then I think you started your first first uh, uh, stint as an entrepreneur, right? Right. With uh, Technovert. So, yeah. so tell me, what so, was that aha moment when you <laughs> woke up one day and said, "Listen, I must start something." So I think it, no, it was Ramp actually, but uh, so uh, Technovert was just a continuation of Ramp. The Ramp story did not end well. Uh, I built a successful business at Ramp. I was able to, uh, you know, build a hundred people team, uh, two and a half million uh, revenue organization. But uh, you know, because I was never focused on um, money, and you know, I was lousy with paperwork as well. I I, I did screw up, and someone took advantage, and uh, they kicked me out of the organization. So I lost everything after uh, almost six years of wow. building that organization. Okay. Uh, I was very proud of that all the time, but so I was kicked out and uh, I felt uh, extremely <laughs> uh, disappointed. Uh, so, so then I started Technovert. So it, Technovert was more or less, it's a continuation of that journey I started at RAM. So when, was when did you start Technovert? 2012. 2012, okay. Uh, okay. So it was uh, really not an aha moment, it was more of frustration and uh, you know, feeling of uh, uh, you know, uh, being let down. Being let down and um, vengeance. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. okay. Yeah. Okay, so you uh, you started Technovert in 2012, right? Right. And you started Keka, I think, uh, 2015. 15, right. Right. So let's try and understand a little bit. Of what was the you know uh, inspiration to start Keka? Why did you you know nothing in your background to me suggests that uh, you know while obviously you managed a team, built a team of 100 people, etc. But uh, it doesn't seem a very obvious fit about you going out and saying listen let me build something in the hr tech space so what right. was the you know what was the inspiration for that yeah so uh, see uh, i like the notion of employee <laughs> enabling uh, an employee and then uh, uh, building a good uh, building them to be a you know good uh, world class professional right so this is what i have been doing at ramp i, I started at ramp also i was hiring people who were unemployable train them uh, and make them world class professionals so so that continued at Technovert as well. I was hiring, my process of hiring was also, I would go to remote colleges, no one else would go, uh, use bootcamp to actually assess their learnability. So I developed a bit of an intuition about what motivates people and uh, you know how do you make them learn something, right? So that's where my people connect, employee connect started establishing. And uh, I felt uh, if I started a product in that space, so that was the most relevant uh, experience I carry from my own experience. So I, that's how I started. Uh, it was, I mean, I, it was really not such a business decision. It was made, it was more out of a passion. But having failed in the past years, uh, I did some validation that there was a business uh, use case there. Okay. Uh, so tell me, right, typically people say that when you want to start something new, you should understand what the competitive landscape is. Right. Know, all those three letter abbreviations, right? To Tom, Tam, Som, right. and so on. Did yeah. you do any of that? Uh, no, I didn't know any of these abbreviations. In fact, even now, uh, I'm, 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 I still feel I'm, uh, uh, you know, uh, not so hands-on with those things. But for me, uh, what I understood at that time was uh, India as a market had so many players but none of them were market leaders none of them had more than uh, you know 2 3% of the you know Total market pie. size so i thought that was an opportunity right and if i could make an impact i could make an impact there because uh, you know there was a clear gap in the market so that was my assessment the tams all these things came in uh, i think little 2 years later when i first thought i should uh, you know probably raise money but otherwise, uh, at the you know when when I really started, it was focused mostly on problem. Actually, you know what is a there's problem in this space nobody is solving, and there's a sizable market. So that was the whole thought process. Sure. So one question: since Technovert was largely a services company, right? And Keka, you I think from the beginning you said you want to go out and build it as a platform, and I've you know often seen that you know including when in my own journey, that it's very hard for you to make a transition from being from yep. being somebody who's built a you know a services business to figuring out how to build a platform business right right so what were the challenges you kind of you know went through 
right. when you were conceptualizing the idea of Keka. And first of all, why did you choose the word Keka? <laughs> right. uh, see, I uh, I wanted, I, I am from uh, Hyderabad, right? I'm born in also Andhra Pradesh, Telugu place. I like uh, Telugu as a language. It, I, I think it's one of the beautiful languages. Um, I used to write also in Telugu. But, uh, you know, having returned to India, I could actually see that, uh, you know, there's so much fascination about everything West. Whereas I found my roots, I found inspiration, I found uh, uh, everything uh, in and around uh, where I belonged, which is, you know, this place, right? So I thought uh, if I had to give a name, it would have to be something that will inspire me, you know, uh, no matter what. This is a name I should stick with, uh, whether I sink or float. <laughs> Uh, and so that's how I chose and uh, you know I wanted a but but then uh, some brandability I was able to uh, uh, assign to it I wanted a word that everybody uh, across the world could uh, pronounce it it had to be uh, brandable two consonant uh, you know same consonant repeating and then two vowels four letter word so I found KKI was the word uh, that fit the bill very nice fascinating okay uh, <coughs> So let's talk a little bit about the Keka journey, right? Right. Um, started out in 2015, thereabouts, and right. then uh, you know you uh, <laughs> think last year, uh, towards the later part of last year, you raised a, which what I think was probably the largest single round Series A round by a SaaS entrepreneur. I think you raised about 57 right. million. Right. Yeah. Right. So just talk us through a little bit about that journey, right? Uh, in terms of, you know, you started out in 2015 and then obviously you would identify a problem which was, which you thought was worth solving. So a little bit about how, you know, uh, you identified the problem, but then you also have to think about how you can build a solution to solve the problem. Right. Right. Yeah. And obviously there are, you know, uh, you know, many, many ways to solve for a problem. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So how do you hit, hit upon your unique approach? To solve right. that problem. So I think uh, one of the questions you asked earlier, right? So that services to product transition. Uh, so uh, see, I was in running the services company, and uh, so but even in services, uh, we were building uh, products for startups based out of US, right? And so that's where actually I felt that you know I'm building a very high quality code. I mean, at the time, I was an engineer coding, right? I, extremely hands on. Uh, so I felt we were doing a great job building a product, but then, you know, it's not uh, ours, right? And then we get charged, you know, $25 per hour and nothing more, right? And, and, and I see that when the project transitions, I'm losing that, you know, that I had emotional connect with that, but then it's not mine. So, so that for hire, basically. Right, right. Yeah. So that's where I felt, uh, you know, uh, that we should build something of our own. So that, that's where it started. For me, uh, for Keka, I, uh, we, we already bought a payroll software for Technovert, but uh, we paid for it and we have not used it, right? And, and uh, uh, that's where I felt, uh, you know, there is a gap in, in, in the market, right? So this particular product, there was a need, but then the product was not able to fulfill. So it, that's where it started. So building a product came natural to me because I have uh, been in that uh, segment, so it, it, it uh, but but like you said, transition is definitely hard uh, from a services to product, right? We did struggle a bit initially, but uh, the way I came out, I actually almost uh, left Technovert. I did not spend any time there. Uh, I had to start from scratch. Uh, there was a separate team that was built. Uh, it was just uh, five again, you know, juniors like less than one year or interns. I uh, uh, put them together and that's how we started uh, building a product so uh, through the journey so uh, the initial capital was uh, you know 10 lakh uh, was the capital <laughs> right so and that and that was the size of the team I could uh, afford uh, so the uh, initial uh, period uh, we we I told myself that I had to build something out in a year take it to the market and a lot of the problems I was able to know because I've experienced them as my, them as, a, as you so know, my own. This is the part of what you call the visceral learning. Right. Part of, you felt the pain right. yourself. Yes. Yes. So it came and up. I, the whole thought process of what to build came from. Yes. Okay. So that's a great. Uh, you know, there's some great learning there that I think, and you know, something worth I think uh, for our audience to think about, 
that uh, most great businesses get built because of a deep understanding of the problem, most of which may have come from experience of having right. seen that problem yourself. Yes. I've heard, I've heard about, for example, we've all heard about the Uber story, right. etc. Yeah. And uh, I think we need more Indian stories. And this is a great Indian story saying, listen, you bought a payroll software, which you are not using. Right. And then when you were building your company, you figured, listen, there's probably a problem waiting to be solved. And no. Right, right, yeah. yeah. No, I think this is very important because see, we were, none of us knew payroll, right? But we had, uh, you know, I had a certain perception of how payroll should be. When I first built the product and took it to the market, uh, I had a lot of, uh, you know, resistance from a CS. They just said, you don't know how to build a product. But, but I knew that product should be so simple that a HR person should be able to run a payroll without knowing a lot of, uh, you know, internals of a payroll, right? Uh, whereas uh, the initial adopters were, most of them were like, you know, the CAs and all, and they would see like, hey, uh, you know, this is not payroll. This is like, you're not, you know, it's, it's too simple. But at that time, I faced the resistance and I had to like go back, change some of it because if I did not change, then there was no adoption. But coming back like four or five years down, we have seen that what I built initially was what get, was getting most adoption because it was most simple. Okay. So uh, I think, uh, you know, it was important that you know, are able to experience the problem. And so one question, uh, uh, Vijay, so you built the product and so talk us through the you know, how do you acquire the first few customers? Right. Was there a, was there massive advertising or massive whatever? <laughs> how did you, you know, how do you build your first few customers? Right. Uh, so I think uh, the first uh, customer came uh, because we were set up a conference in Hysia and it came at a zero cost for us. Right. So we collected few leads from uh, conference. Uh, this was a uh, in 2015 and then uh, we 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 did only those conferences where the entry fee was ex extremely like you know small but the goal was to just go attend an event uh, present uh, you know something about the product and collect few cards and then speak to them so that's how uh, we got our first customer out of these uh, conferences and then later uh, we literally uh, you know our target used to be like go to mindspace Right, get an appointment with one customer. You get an. So entry. you were selling largely to to SMB. large corporates. No SME. SMB. We were we focused on SME, SME segment. SME. Right. And why did you make that call? Uh, I think uh, two reasons. Uh, one, uh, you know, enterprises. Uh, I, I was afraid to approach them, and when I looked at uh, an enterprise and thought about going and meeting them, it was too tough to know who to meet. Right. So at, this, at that time, I really did not have that much thoughts about, you know, what is the right market to hit. The what I chose was really because, you know, what was most convenient for me to get those early adopters who I could readily speak to. That was okay. my. So what was your, you know, what, what do they call it? Sweet spot, right? What was your, the, you know, let's say if you were to define you know, again with the benefit right. of hindsight. Yeah. Uh, an ideal customer profile. Right. Yeah. What would it be? Uh, so it evolved over a period of a time and, and we did not know what our ICP was, right? So we uh, initially, we just started approaching the SMEs because it was fast. Speaking to a decision maker and being able to get a feedback or a yes, no was extremely fast. So that was uh, uh, what we were looking at initially. And over a period of a time, what happened was uh, there was a funding that got raised in our business, right? So there's a, on enterprise side, there's a Darwin box. And then on the SME side, there's a great tip and there's, uh, you know, other players, all of them raised money and uh, we were bootstrapped. So what <coughs> we chose was the mid, uh, the segment where uh, Darwin box was not focusing and where great tip was not so strong, right? So it was like 50 to 200 or 50 to 300. So this was the only space we targeted. So in companies which had between 50 to 300 people. 300 headcount. Uh, so we chose only these, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's extremely narrow space. Okay. Uh, but but I think uh, it was a good choice because for us, uh, you know, we were bootstrapped. If I have to serve a 10 people company versus a 50 people company, the cost is same, uh, right? Whereas uh, I get better revenue there. 
so i'll be able to retain how did you margin. what was your approach to pricing how did you you know uh, i think that's a good question uh, so when we started selling in the market uh, the products at the time were selling for like 10 rupees uh, you know 20 rupees per employee per month and and with that uh, pricing it, it it's impossible to make uh, money. any money sustainable revenue right so i felt uh, if i'll try for one and half year right trying to price it uh, a little premium right so we were pricing at uh, 40 rupees per employee per month and we thought if customers bought at this price we are good if they did not buy then we are in the wrong market so i i was clear about my exit <laughs> criteria there so for us the real uh, uh, we actually saw that customers were buying okay so so we so we chose so to be you premium. mentioned uh, you know darwin box on one side of the spectrum and great tip on the other side right so obviously uh, you know uh, from a competitive perspective right uh, one was obviously the choice of segments you were focused on etc but from a product standpoint right was it what did you consciously think about which would make what you were doing a little different from what let's say a darwin box or a you know a great tip was doing right so from a product perspective uh, i really uh, did not use uh, competitors as a you know criteria to decide my differentiation so what i felt uh, since you know uh, we 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 knew how a problem could be solved better right but then uh, market perception is also important right so from a market perception i saw by my initial uh, <coughs> intuition was that if i built a product that was good in user experience right it would connect with the buyer and uh, it would sell and that would also command a premium right so that uh, initial uh, uh, hypothesis actually uh, uh, you know got va- uh, validated in the market we would just show a demo of a ppt we would not show the product first we would just show a ppt highlight those few screens and then we would tell a narration narrative right saying you know how we are different and and screenshots would speak first so there we were able to win uh, the customers heart first right and then came the other things about you know features and all those other things sure. so so your model was uh, largely direct direct it was a direct uh, and so how did you, you know in terms of outreach what are the you know what are the three four different let's say tactics right you right used so you talked about showing up at all these events and all of those things right right but that apart what were the three four you know things so which I, i think one of the channels that worked brilliantly for us and 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 i've invested heavily was uh, organic uh, seo okay so while we were doing direct uh, sales approach trying to uh, you know approach customer one by one uh, i also uh, invested uh, you know we hired uh, someone from a college again so he was uh, baron he was in uh, second year when i hired him he was already doing uh, running a part time business in you know running a seo business so i hired him and uh, we built an seo engine uh, right so we spent nothing on ads almost for 5 years zero spend on ads the only thing we were doing was seo and uh, i think by third or uh, third year or so 100% of our uh, uh, demand inbound. generation was inbound. all inbound inbound and zero marketing spend brilliant Yeah. Brilliant. So I think there's some very good takeaways uh, there that uh, focus on, uh, uh, you know, on uh, product. Yeah. Uh, focus on giving high quality experience, and then use SEO to drive inbound. And I'm assuming your NPS and all of those factors would have been very high. Most of your customers would have a lot of uh, reference. Ah, so the word of mouth uh, was also something we were able to uh, do well. Okay. Uh, so that also actually helped. Helped you. Yeah. Okay. So tell me one more question, right? Um, you are a single founder. All right. Right. How hard is it being a single founder? Extremely <laughs> tough. Okay. So I have there <laughs> been so in your journey? Yeah. Right. Right. Have they have there been times when you've thought about saying, "Listen, I wish I had somebody else I could share the pain with." Okay. Uh, all the time. All the time. All the time. Okay. Uh, so when you're a single person. <clears throat> a lot of times uh, you take bets right as you run the business now you do not know if it's right or wrong and in my case uh <clears throat> my employees 
they were all junior to me. These were all people I hired out of college. So they all look up to me. So the pressure was immense. So you are the alpha be... male god <laughs> to whom everybody has to... <laughs> right. You know. huh? right. Yeah. No, no, I mean, you put it very nicely. But uh, <laughs> for me, the other side, there was immense pressure to be right most of the time. And, and, and I felt a lot of times, uh, you know, if I had someone I could just even mirror thoughts, it would have been helpful. And not having the, that, right, I used to constantly, you know, try to assimilate those ideas, you know, think, uh, analyze, analyze, and I used to just get lost. So it was a... So did you have any mentors in your journey? Uh, actually, no, uh, okay. not, not uh, so much, but, but I, I think uh, hindsight, I should have uh, found mentors. Some mentor. Right, B you know, b because my <coughs> initial years has always been figure out your own thing. I chose the hard path, but but I would suggest, uh, you know, if I had a mentor, I would have probably done probably better. better. So, Vijay, uh, and let's go back in time, and I want to ask you about this funding question. Uh, so, obviously, I think uh, you are one of those low profile that with reason the wood solid business started in 2002, and then 2007, you became a became a hero by raising the angle yet. The probably one of the largest series A rounds for fast company. So, at what point of time did uh, you feel, first of all, that uh, we should look at raising funding? Or did it happen that people heard about you who started reaching out to you and say, Kissan, uh, we think your business, which is you know, investable, and we should put in money? Right. But also, I think, again, the question you know, I asked you this about. We were single from the uh, right. back, right? So you had one guy who was like had the business pretty much at his fingertips, built it without too much external support. Right. And, uh, yeah. and uh, then so let's talk a little bit about this funding, the funding card. Right. So see it did not happen that I did not want to raise money. I did attempt raising money in two thousand eighteen. Because uh, for me uh, there was a immense peer pressure. Uh, my, you know, counterparts, uh, they were raising funding and uh, I was without funding with uh, mere uh, resources, right? So I, uh, there was a need. So 2018, I interpreted one. Uh, so that did not happen uh, uh, because one, uh, you know, I, I did not apply to the evaluation. And uh, two, the investor uh, also had a different thesis about this uh, HR tech space, right? So, uh, so that did not happen then. And then uh, 2019, I did another attempt. And at that time, uh, I went to Bangalore. Uh, I took an advice from an investment backer because for me, I, I never had any experience building this. And I didn't even know the narrative I should be conveying to a VC. But uh, uh, I met about two or three VCs. Uh, uh, I think I Sequoia was also one of them. So, uh, and, uh, but, but, you know, one and a half month down, I think they invested in Darren Watts. So I'd probably give them more information from the anti that actually giving a pitch. So, uh, I did, I was not able to raise money. Right. And, and, uh, what I have realized was between those two years, although I've not raised money, whatever I promised I would deliver on a pitch deck, I was able to achieve those targets without funding. Well, so that gave me a... You know that confidence that you know it's not all about funding, right? And uh, so, so uh, I think that that was uh, more important. Uh, and then came uh, COVID, but COVID, uh, uh, you know, initial months I was really under severe uh, pressure because uh, the other organization, Technomort, uh, he was also not doing well. We lost uh, about one million dollar was written off because the customer did not pay money. What businesses were in a mess. Uh, so I, I went through a lot of pressure and then uh, I was hoping to raise money again. Uh, but uh, at the time, I think VCs were uh, on a uh, you know, back pedal, so they were not actively investing the initial months of COVID. So, uh, and, but, but uh, at that time, I chose that uh, you know, uh, I need to invest all out, go all out on sales, right? So all the money we had, we invested only on sales and nothing gaps, right? We fully to the frozen. Uh, any hiding on the product, 
uh, just before the hiring, the funding, sorry, uh, what was the customer base and how many customers bring back? Uh, the one uh, with uh, the recent one, uh, we we are on we had about uh, four three thousand five hundred and our customers. Perfect, right? So, uh, so with the VCs, uh, uh, I what I uh, you know we published multiple items. There was cases where look, the VC was windy, but uh, I was not ready. I was not happy with the valuation. Or when the VCs were uh, when I wanted the VCs were not keen. I did face those uh, rejections, but they only made uh, me understand better the VC market. I realized and come to a conclusion by 2021 that if I'm raising money, I will only raise money from uh, you know outside India, not from the investors in India. Because uh, at the time, uh, the HR tech was not an appealing market. A lot of them would say, you know, we don't have a strong uh, thesis about this HR tech in India as a market. And 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 few other even advised me. By the way, I was advised by a while the investors that you need a uh, you know management with a good pedigree. That was another thing. By the way, um, I mean I I although not everyone was uh, telling me that I lacked any uh, any any IV nothing. There was nothing right. So it's like uh, some guy started and on <laughs> uh, no no name no. IV degrees, so so that uh, was pointed out also by one of the investors. Uh, so we and then I felt, uh, uh, you know, I felt it was their problem. They didn't understand my business. Um, so I, I did uh, decide to hire only uh, an outside investor. Right. But so how did you win my raise to the Um What you raise a very large sum of money for to sell any interest. So what, how did you decide to, you know, how did you that I did to that number? What way work do with that firm? Right. So, see, I think uh, this is important. Early stages, right? Uh, any investor would say, present your business plan, present your, uh, you know, annual operating plan and, and you know, how much we need. But, uh, and that's what how I was approaching earlier. Uh, but I think when you reached a uh, certain size, right, uh, at the CCA level, there's already a product market fit. There's no need to prove that you have a blog. And in my case, actually, I never had, you know, with Westbridge, uh, I didn't, they, they didn't ask me for a blog. And uh, I think for me, for, for, for them, they understood that someone built a product with a strong product uh, mindset, chose an ICP, uh, right? Extremely specific ICP, were targeting that. So this is what they have seen. Uh, the strong product uh, focus, and uh, you know, so it, it was, it, it happened in that manner. It did not happen the other way. Now coming to the valuation number, so uh, again, or to raise this money, there was no such intent that I should raise this money. We didn't come in the, in that fashion. Uh, so uh, it actually came in like where uh, so West, which was uh, you know uh, a very mature uh, uh, fund, right, and. Uh, Long term focus fund. So, so, you know, I think I can I'll probably give it a little more details a little later. But uh, the valuation and then the structuring came and, and it became this 7 million, not because we wanted it. It was mostly because, uh, you know, I was not willing to dilute all at a single tranche. I wanted phased out in multiple tranches. Uh, so, that is how we actually came up came to that way. Okay, uh, let's uh, do some, uh, you know, real deal driving. Okay, right. yeah. So, in the last seven years, uh, tell me two or three things which you feel went to the, went to blast. To the back. To the back, right? Went, the, went along the vision that you had. And obviously, two, three things which, you know, didn't go to play. Uh, so, see, I wanted to build some other product actually about talent, learning, and all, right? But but the moment I started speaking to the customers, I realized that's not a market where someone would want to pay money, right? So it's where we chose payroll. So right, I think that when we came part way, the first two ones itself, right? Uh, so so that was uh, not really what I wanted. I think that's a great point. That I mean, I keep definitely people that uh, it's not what you think. Right, good ones. 
Yeah. If the market doesn't know what yeah. they want. Yeah. All right. And many times, uh, you know, entrepreneurs will uh, uh, go listen. Right. So they have the flags. Uh, so they take it. Right, right. Uh, I think it's that, you know, hard, uh, um, that heart, meeting the heart reality. Thank you, right? So that compromise has to be done. And we had to do that. And I think it was the right thing. So, but as a vision, right? So we wanted to build a much bigger platform uh, that which we were not able to build because uh, for lack of money and resources. So, yeah. uh, uh, so but but I, I hope I'm able to do that now with the fundraise. So you talked about, so one was, I was asking you about B, two or three things which went to plan. Right, I think, yeah, yeah. Both. Uh, so I think the fact that there was no market leader and uh, there was a s space for a new and hard uh So that did go as per the plan. Uh, today we are the fastest way in HR tech and most likely we will uh, overcome and become the our top HR tech market at least in the SME space, right? So there, there are, it's a huge space within our SME space. So I think we'll be a leader in the uh, next uh, one to two years. So that is as per the plan. Uh, what did not go by plan, uh, like one was I already mentioned, fit, right? And two, uh, so the product itself, what we wanted to build it and all, we are not there yet. I, from, you know, I really feel I'm not so happy with my own product at this point. And, and every time a customer says we're using your product, the first thing, you know, that echoes me was like knowing how they've seen me. It's not a product I wanted to build up it, like it or not, right? This is the feeling that I keep getting. I hope I want to be able to overcome that soon. Okay, so let's get to that brings me to and what keeps you awake at night. See, all these years, uh, it's the uh, uh, you know not having enough resources and uh, not being proven and not knowing if I'm I'm going to be successful or not, and then you know tons of problem around you, right? So. I uh, always had that anxiety uh, with me sleeping next to me. Uh, so that's what it had been <laughs> all the years, right? Not knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, so, so that's that. That's what kept me alive. But now, uh, at least you know the money aspect, right? So there's some money there, right? You're not all so much written off yet, right? So, so that gives me some solace. Uh, what keeps me awake right now is uh, you know the, the Expectations now we have set for everyone, right? To employees, to people, uh, everyone. I think that's what keeps me awake now. Okay, so a couple of questions, right? Uh, Vijay, uh, we came back, started something, deal it, first extra, first techno work and more, you come. And uh, at some point, uh, we may have quantum record saying, yes, and it may as good, it go back to the US. Or let me build this business of the say the back door point out. Right? What and what was the pull of Hydrogen? And apart from the fact that obviously you start eating your but, but, it, yeah. but obviously there's an emotional connect. Right, yes. But from a business perspective, yeah. Right. Uh you started this with bit no a good scale this mess in Hyderabad. Yeah. And he, there was somebody else contemplating starting something in the park. Right. What do you think would be the three or four things? which make Hyderabad a very compelling value proposition so predict to start. Right, yeah. So I think, uh, see, I always felt uh, Hyderabad Anvis had been an underdog, right? So, uh, so much potential, but uh, not so well known as a startup ecosystem outside. Uh, I'm talking about the last 10 to years, right? Uh, so it had been an underdog. So there's uh, so much potential, uh, a lot of energy, talent, to build the product, all of that is available in the market, right? Uh, so we let those few people, uh, you know, are, are that business sense. Uh, so these were the things that were lacking earlier. But I think, uh, uh, you know, now we have shaped up pretty well. Uh, there's so many startups, uh, you know, that I would come up like, you know, companies like High Radius, Dark Box, they've already, you know, been new requests, right? So I think they all set a certain, uh, uh, you know, milestone. Right, an inspiration for a lot of other startups. Uh, what lacks? What we lack today in Hyderabad? I think uh, uh, we have a lot of talent that is, uh, you know, working in enterprises here. 
more of those people should come to building startups. I think uh, they would do more miracles. Uh, from a talent perspective, uh, UX design, uh, I see that also picking up pretty well. Product management uh, talent is also picking well. These are the two roles. If we're able to shape in this market, these are the ones from which you will start, uh, you know, filling the gaps that otherwise wouldn't be seen. Okay. Okay. What lies like ahead for KCAP? You built a strong leadership position in India, the SM in space, right? So if we were to do some crystal ball busy, right? Yeah. To let's say the next two or three groups, right? Where do you see KCAP going? Yeah. See, uh. Being bootstrap, right? So bootstrap companies focus only on, you know, one or two core metrics and then they ignore everything else. So that way my team, uh, you know, like I never had a finance team. There was only one accounting guy running 3,000 account, you know, 4,000 customers building and all, right? So the first year really is going into filling those gaps and building, uh, you know, enough support system first place, for in the first place. Uh, so that is where we see you know, it's actually stifling our growth, right? So that's what we want to do this year. And getting some basic. Yeah, so the team structures the place. Otherwise, the way. How many senior level people have been work on work since Uh, Not uh, many. So, so in product management, I, you know, we just uh, brought in uh, Bharat. Uh, so, uh, you know, from Mount, uh, we, we moved in from Woodgo. Uh, so for design, uh, there's a uh, like fresh boss Romanian who we uh, we the director of design at Fresh Worlds. So he's the leadership by moving him from Chennai. Uh, they are a great person. Uh, and uh, so so far, I think these were the only two with senior help help from customer success perspective. We brought in uh, Krishna, uh, who's from Bangalore. Uh, I mean Telugu person, but moving from Bangalore to here. Uh, so we're bringing with talent to Hyderabad. I can ask. Right, so uh, thus far, um, is it being so? So, so one is the you know filling in. We did it. You are right. Bird in the big bringing it. Yeah. Okay. What is life when it remains? So I, I uh, right. So I think uh, the next step would be for us to actually uh, choose the markets beyond India. Right. So we've already been focusing on Southeast Asia, and we're seeing good traction there. Uh, and beyond that, uh, we're looking at U.S. Uh, you know, regions. Uh, so for that, uh, there's a lot to be weighed on the product as well, uh, because in our space, uh, each market would have to make sure there's a certain uh, geography compliance and uh, those needs to be met. So there's good investment on the product and uh, you know, getting a taste of newer markets. That's the next steps. Okay, a um, couple of questions on leadership style. Yeah, like, so, so well, what we like about you know, very uh, has your name, down to work, okay. very understated. But what the detective work with the child did in it. Right, yeah. But also, I guess, in the early stages, I'm assuming you were the guy who were going out and pitching to um, customers and, you know, follow that stuff. Right. So, so, um, so let's say if I were to ask you, uh, what? What do you say makes for a good good leader, right? Three attributes, right? I mean, I I can relate to some of what you were saying, like you know this single founder thing, where you know there's turmoil all around you, but you have to be you know be the right brave guy who says, listen, I'm on top of things, right? My internally, yeah. So, so what makes for a good leader? So I think uh, for me, uh, solving uh, is where it has to start. Uh, in take care of your people, they'll take care of you, right? So this is what I really believed all the years, and uh, I'll continue to insist on every year that joins Keka. Uh, so roles, titles, uh, you know, even if I can not a CEO or title, it does not mean the employee that I'm hiring has to listen to me. They're, they're not in that generation anymore. They don't listen to you. They don't care. Right. In that particular context with an employee, how you are behaving is what matters. And at that point, if he believes you are someone who is invested in building their career, they will do their best, give their best. So, you know, your job as a leader is to serve people. Uh, the more serve people you are able to serve, the stronger and the bigger uh, leader you are being. Okay. Yes.
Got to cite it. Okay. Uh, I think you, so obviously there was another question, but I think kind of answered it saying, but you know, this game, you know, uh, it focus on not necessarily a pool fired from way more applications, I mean, old gaps and so on. And it's not really so much about knowledge gives skill, but more about actor too. Right. Oh. Okay. One last question. Not uh, about the uh, culture. Or you know how it's under me. Right. Right. How do you ensure, uh, you know, uh, you obviously built it with a certain, let's say, set of values and all of that. How do you make sure that that one year to right for that to the company? Right. So I am also learning because this is also the first time I'm actually building uh, a size of team. But uh, what I've understood is, uh, and it scares me, right? So size actually scares me because earlier when we were small and uh, and I was able to communicate, I, I knew everybody's name. I knew where they were from, uh, uh, you know, what motivated them. I, I knew, I thought I knew every one of them. But as I started adding more people, like, you know, now came a situation where I'm not able to remember the names. So that actually scares me, right? And then we start realizing that, you know, what they receive as a message, what uh, or as a core values of the system, it is not through me anymore. It is through their managers and their managers, right? So I am realizing that my job and sword would have to be actually be more communicative and working with these managers, right? And 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 uh, I'm definitely also learning lessons there on what to communicate and how to communicate. Uh, and, and I provide the work job there. So, Vijay, thank you. Uh, it's been a fabulous 40-minute 40, 40 conversation. Uh, I'd love to talk some more, but I know you have a company to run. Right. Nathan Bells. But thank you for your time. Really appreciate this. And I think uh, thank you for keeping, it up, keeping off our first episode of FLAP yeah. DLN. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, this opportunity, MSR. <laughs> I hope uh, Dean of One Sword does great. Yeah.